Okay, hi guys. We're going to finish up this the last section of 3.5 or rational functions and the la graphing rational functions. The last part of this is going to be oblique asymptotes. Um, remember when we talked about having the three different types, three different scenarios of having um, horizontal asymptotes. You could either have horizontal asymptote where you end up having um, a constant over a constant, in which case that number is your horizontal asymptote. You would have a constant over a variable, in which case that goes to zero, which is your horizontal asymptote. And then you'd have a variable over a constant, and we said that went to something that was oblique, and that's what we're going to do. Um, and from the graphs that you saw yesterday on the suggested homework problems, those are going to be diagonal. Okay, so with that being said, let's take a look at this example um, that does have an oblique asymptote on it. Um, you're going to do what you normally do. So I would say go ahead and factor this. So this function is going to end up factoring into x times x plus 4 across the top. And you're going to end up with 2x minus 1 on the bottom. This means, of course, that you've got a vertical asymptote at x equals 1 half. So now in terms of graphing this, you can do it however you want. I mean, so according to your scaling, just obviously make sure that you're exact with what you're doing. Um, so we've got one down there at x equals 1 half. And then from there, what we're going to end up doing is then we have to figure out what the oblique asymptote is because we need to know, and again, the reason why you know you have an oblique asymptote is when you check out for your horizontal asymptote, you're going to take the highest degree term over the highest degree term. So in this case, you've got x squared over 2x. That reduces to x over 2. Now, the interesting thing about this is that when you do it, I can also rewrite it like this, 1 half x. That 1 half is actually going to end up being the slope of your oblique asymptote, or sometimes they're called slant asymptotes. Um, the only question now becomes is then, how do we know where to put it? Because I could have, obviously, I mean, this is a line with a slope of 1 half. The question is, where does your y-intercept fall? Is it, any of these lines could potentially be it. We just don't know where to lock it in. Now, the locking it in comes from the following. What you're going to actually do is you're going to divide out this fraction, um, or divide out the polynomial. So I'm going to actually take the 2x minus 1, and I'm going to divide it into x squared plus 4x. So we're going to use long division for this. If for some reason you've got the divisor is like x minus 3 or something where you don't have a coefficient from the x, you can go ahead and use synthetic division. Um, so anyway, the nice thing is since we kind of know that you got that one half thing going on, um, we, when we ask what do we multiply, excuse me a second, you know, what do we multiply 2x by, oops, sorry, what do we multiply 2x by to make it equal to x squared, that slope problem is kind of, that slope answer is kind of what we already have. So that's going to be 1 half. 1 half times 2 is going to be the 1. x times x is x squared. So I get 1 half times x squared. So I get 1 half x squared there. I take that back. Sorry, my math is obviously not there. So I get 1 half. So I get x squared. Now, 1 half x times negative 1 is going to be a negative 1 half x. So when you do that, now again, remember, we're going to subtract all of this. Okay? So then this will become negative, this part right here, this part right here is going to end up becoming plus one half, which is the reason why when I come up with this, this is going to become four and one half x, or you could say nine, let's call it nine halves x actually. Um, so then the question is, what do I multiply two x by to make it equal to nine halves? Um, and so that would actually be, what, 9 fourths? So this is a little bit messier than what we may usually get. Um, so you get 9 fourths times that, you get 9 halves x, and then you're going to get, obviously, minus 9 fourths. Now, at this part, you don't really care about the remainder, because what ends up happening is, is as your graph, as you're at whatever the curve is gets further and further away, it's going to come in and get closer and closer and closer to whatever that asymptote is going to be, like most asymptotes are. The difference here, however, is that the remainder is going to get driven to zero, much like 
when you've got a vertical asymptote of like you know two over x, everything's going to get driven to zero. So we really don't care about what the remainder is. So this right here, you know what? Let me do this. I'm going to rewrite it down here a little bit lower. So this right here is my equation of our oblique asymptote. So that's going to be y equals 1 half x plus 9 fourths, which is about 2 and a quarter. If I could write quarter down correctly, my apologies. So now how to plot this? Well, you have a y-intercept. You have a slope. Welcome back to Algebra 1. So I'm going to start about 2 and a quarter. And go up 1 to the right 2, up 1 to the right 2, up 1 to the right 2. And then obviously draw in your slant asymptote. I'll arrange, tweak that in a second. And now from here, everything that we're going to do is going to be identical to what we did. Um, everything we're going to do here is going to be identical to what we did with just a standard rational graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to center, we're going to use that vertical asymptote as a center point in which to plot things. So x and f of x, we know that since at 1 half, I don't have a value, pick three points to the left of that, pick three points to the right of that. And you're going to plug them into the equation and you're going to find points to plot. So if I plug in a 0, I get 0. If I plug in a negative 1, I get negative 1 times 3 on the top, so that's negative 3 over negative 3, so that's going to be 1. I'm going to go then ahead and plug in negative 2, so I get negative 2 times 2 on the top, so that's 4 over negative 5, so that's going to be a negative Wait a second. Sorry. Um, so that's going to be what? Negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4 on the top over um, negative 5. Sorry, just having a little bit of a brain cramp. Um, you end up coming up with. When I plug in the negative 2, you get negative 2 times 2 on the top for negative 4. On the bottom, you get um, negative 5. So you end up getting 4 fifths. The reason why I was having a brain cramp here is because look how when, these, when you plot these things, you're going to get 0, 0 here. I'm going to go up to negative 1, 1. And I guess you know normally you're expecting it to continue to grow. But obviously, the way that the asymptotes are drawn, you're going 0, 1, and then you're coming back down to 0 0.8, et cetera. So you're going to get this graph. That is essentially increasing, and then it's going to turn around and start decreasing as it gets closer and closer to this lamp asymptote. Similar sort of thing is going to happen on the other side. You're going to end up coming down. I will get the exact points, but we're going to end up coming down here, and then we're going to start coming back up. So um, if I plug in a 1, I get 1 times 5 on the top over 1, so I'm going to get a value of 5. If I plug in a 2, I get 2 times 6 on the top, which is 12 over 3. So that's going to be a value of 4. If I plug in 3, I get 3 times 7 is 21 over 5, so 21 fifths, which is and now, notice it's already coming back up. That's going to be like 4.2. So you're going to go ahead and plot those. I've got at 1, I'm going up to 5. At 2, I'm going to be at 4. And then at 3, I already have to start coming back up. So I'm going to come down through here, turn around. Out that way. And that's how you do oblique asymptotes. So again, the hardest part is trying to find the equation of the line. Now, most of the problems that you're going to end up doing are not going to have those goofy fractions in it. So you should have a little bit of a cleaner time with it. Um, if you have questions, obviously, yell, scream, or kick. Um, we'll have time in class to work on them. So we'll go through and do them then. Thank you so much.